Okay, here's a real quick video I'm going to do of a test box that I put together. Uh, it's a smaller version of a, of a full-size version that Craig S. Uh, on YouTube had, had put together. Uh, so I just made a smaller four-port RJ45 uh, box um, just for testing panels. Uh, when I create a new panel and I get the uh, Arduinos put, put on the panel, I can test them. Just plug them in. Uh, so this is kind of a, a bench model. Um, it has the Arduino Mega in there. Uh, and then I ordered some shields made for the Mega. Those, those shields are great. Um, they can handle uh, a good bit of heat without curling the, the pads. Got them on Amazon. You can get them on eBay too. I'll try to find a, a link to those. But anyway, I don't have my 487 chips yet, but I've got everything wired up. All the, uh, got the Mega there, so that's the master. Uh, I've got 12 volts coming in. Um, the blue line, blue and white lines are data A and B. And the, I got, I have three of the eight cores for positive and the other three of the eight cores for negative. And then I'm, uh, obviously the two blue and uh, white stripey blue for data A and B. Uh, so I made everything modular. That way if I have to take this whole thing apart, I can. I got disconnects on uh, data and power and on my volt and amp meter as well. Uh, so, and my um, power positive and negative 12 volts um, on my rail right there. Uh, so if I got to get in here and take this apart, it's not a big deal. I need to redo something or rob parts um, for anything. So I got 12 volts coming in, like I said, from a power supply um, for a desktop that I converted to use as a bench model. Eventually I'm going to run the entire sim and all the panels using this power supply. It's nothing fancy. It's a 430 watt uh, power supply. So. Uh, not really a big deal there, but it's a good clean stable source of power. So <clears throat> networks should run darn good Got the extra 5 volts 3 3.3 and the 12 volt in the grounds if I need those I'll use them if I don't I'll cut them off later uh, Got obviously a USB because you're going to need a USB at least coming out of your master going back to the uh, PC um, Put the volt and amp meter on there just so I can see what what's uh, see if the voltage fluctuates and see if my current draw is too much but on my ports, I marked them. Marked them uh, left side, the three on the left, positive. And then you got a data A, and then a white B, and then three negatives. So all I got to do is plug in an RJ45 cord. Uh, thanks for Craig S for uh, putting his info out there that way I can kind of make a smaller test model. But here are my two megas that I've, that I've got together. These are going to go on my CDU and AAP. They're going to control the display and it's going to control this Arduino is going to control the display and half the buttons and the other half of the buttons including the AAP are going to be ran by that one. And so to make this as tight as possible I got like I said I'm using the shields and I put the male pins underneath and I put the female pins up top. Okay phone break. Anyway uh, like I said, uh, male pins on bottom, female pins on top. So I've got VIN, voltage in, coming into an RJ45 connector that I soldered to the shield. So I've got my VIN uh, on the right, my negative on the left, and data A and B in the center. And I'm running uh, basically running the right Adreno, Adreno as you can see. Um, uh, tying into the VIN and negative and the A and B go into that board. There's no need to put a second R RJ45 on the second board and run a whole separate other um, RJ45 cable. It's the exact same thing. Uh, it, it would be accomplishing nothing because you're getting data A and B right there. Why do you need to get it all the way back over here and then bring it back out? It makes no sense. And there's enough power there uh, and such a low current draw that it's not going to hurt anything. So at least with these two panels, for now, that's how I'm going to run those two. And like I said, I can disconnect these two if I need to. If i got to separate it from the main board, nothing is hardwired. So if the chip needs to come out, it's in the socket. No big deal on both of them. Get that out. 
Um, uh, I can take power and data off. Uh, I can split and separate the shield from the megas. It's no big deal. Uh, I can stick it to the USBs to flash them if I gotta update the, the sketch. Um, Ian, I read on Eagle Forms, said put a jumper on the uh, receive uh, pin on the receive side. Put a jumper in there. That way, if you gotta update your sketch, you can pull the pin and pull that jumper out, and it will disconnect. It'll disconnect the uh, RX line from the network, and so it won't um, cause problems when you uh, need to update your sketch or flash it. So when you want to flash either one of these megas or any of your any of them pull the jumper stick the USB in there flash disconnect USB put the put the jumper back on hit connect power and, and it should be good so I just wanted to kind of you know share what I've been doing I was, I've been trying to make this stuff as compact as possible uh, using basically doing the absolute most with the absolute least um, I'm sure there's other ways of doing it too um, this, these two boards are going to sit on top of um, my LED board, which is going to sit above my back of my circuit board on my CDU and AAP. Um, so these will be will be the, the the main PCB on the back side of those panels um, with a display for the CDU, and then you have an LED layer on top of that, and then these will sit on top of that. So these will be completely easy to get used get to you can get to everything real easy nothing's going to be going to require desoldering or a bunch of labor if I got to get back in there and do something replace a chip um, who knows but anyway cat 6 cat 5 these are 5e e, uh, keystone jacks I'm not worried about cat 6 um, but anyway that's pretty much it um, so I can either leave this junction box as is and use it for testing all the time I could sell it keep it rob the parts out of it because my my intention is to put a junction with a master inside each console right console will have this left console will have uh, basically a board like this mounted against the wall with a master and all the uh, I'm still gonna hook them up with RG45 because that's super easy um, in case I got a disconnect one it's just one wire just disconnect the sucker disconnect it pull it out real easy uh, but anyway one for the front dash one for left console one for the right console and this power supply like I said is going to run the whole show uh, including the LEDs so on this I think I've got about 40 amps on this thing on the 12 volt rail so good to go on that but anyway um, hope that helps anybody get um, watching Craig S and reading a bunch of forum posts really did it for me so in about a week's time I got enough info and started putting stuff together so I knocked these two guys out this afternoon uh, on the bench real fast I had ordered some parts and just waited for them to show up but yeah I like these I like these shields like I said I'm gonna try to get a link for those um, so yeah you don't have to worry about the pads curling up and they, they go the um, connection goes all the way through it's a through hole so it's double sided very nice very very nice I like those uh, but anyway yeah just cheap uh, volt amp meter uh, found that guy on Amazon too or eBay I can't remember anyway yeah it's in line with my 12 volts and uh, yeah same deal if I got to do the master I, I don't see myself having to mess with that but got an extra jumper might as well because I might use this thing I uh, could use it as serial again if I wanted to I don't have to stay with RS-485 if I wanted to play around with that for something but anyway that's it thank you